Attention Spacers, welcome back to another thrilling episode of Adventures in the Void. We are a sci-fi tabletop role-playing game discussion transmission. I am Jay. And I'm Ross. Join us as we trade tales and celebrate the beauty and wonder of the cosmos. Welcome to the Adventures in the Void Space Cast. My name is Ross McClure. I'm joined once again by my friend, Father Chris. Say hi, Father uh, Chris. Yes. <laughs> hi, Father Chris. Um, uh, sorry, I, I got caught up looking at my uh, my Audacity display, making sure everything right. is all right. And uh, here at Good the to be Adventures here again. Of, uh, here at the Adventures of Void Space Cast, we talk about folk science fiction tabletop role playing games. Uh, one in particular that, that we love. Uh, so, uh, and we are joined tonight uh, by my friend Jeremy Rector, uh, who I met in my first ever Traveler Games, and um, and has also contributed uh, recently to the the full body of works of Traveler. Although we, uh, Father Chris and I, started talking about some of the basic texts, uh, the classic Traveler. We've been using the facsimile edition and. Um, uh, I also talked to um, Mr. Omar Golan Joel uh, and his in indie science fiction tabletop role playing game. But there is a massive body of uh, science fiction nerdery out there just within the space of Traveler alone. And uh, we're going to pick just one slice of that tonight, following on the trail of talking last time about space combat. So we're just going to like dig into starships and space and space uh, space stations and space combat and uh, and look at how deep that uh, rabbit hole goes in the world of Traveler. Welcome to the podcast, Jeremy. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so, uh, last episode, Father Chris and I talked about space combat. Uh, we sort of alternately go back and forth when we talk because we're in a classic Traveler game, so we talk classic Traveler um which, you know, hopefully also kind of encompasses uh, the history then of Traveler. And then we'll also flip over and talk about the modern game. And sometimes Father Chris will talk about T5 too. So we, we hop around and talk about different things, but we, we talk about it mostly in general. But we're talking about space combat. And uh, in the original game, we had it happen tonight. Right, Father Chris, we uh, we rolled a sure two D six uh, cruiser pirate, um, and uh, oh no! <laughs> and bear in mind, we are an unarmed free trader. <laughs> Run yeah. away! And uh, that's what we did. Yeah. So you know, and we talked about the rules in it uh, that you have uh, several thousand second round, and then uh, you know. Um, uh, you, 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 you're supposed to do these vectors, but we had been using a radar screen uh, to, to do range bands that would come later. Uh, and then um, it mentions missiles in a couple of places, but uh, doesn't offer any information about missiles. Uh, and, uh, of course, the game came out in 1977, and then this book comes out in 1979. And um, But in the original game I have here, you have what? You have uh, rules for space combat, rules for starships, rules for constructing a starship, and then you have like four or five different types of starships, and the, and there aren't that many different kinds. So you have uh, you also have rules if you want to be a naval officer, if you want to have a naval career, 
Uh, so you have all these things, but in 1979 they published this book. So that's the the first thing, um, Jeremy. Is where is this this impetus for this book come from in 1979? It's High Guard. Well, so, so yeah, so I, I I wasn't involved in in the classic travel. Of course, High Guard. yeah. I, I, I did yeah, I, I <laughs> did some work on the. We're just on, chatting on about the, High Guard, yeah, yeah just as a sure. starting point. Yeah. So 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 high, so the classic traveler covers um, adventure class ships. So the the, the smaller vessels. Um, originally, Traveler had a uh, the, the, the the largest ships were you know I, I think in 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 in, uh, in book two starships I think the largest ships were a thousand tons, and then and then they rented High Guard and they ran ships up to like five thousand tons I believe, and so it, it was a it was a very much a small ship sort of a setting a small ship universe was what was what High Guard was really designed for, and it was designed to to, to give you more of an ability to. Build ships that have more had more of a military military bent. So uh, High Guard had more at bay weapons, and you had larger vessels with spinal mount weapons. Um, you know there was there was anime at the time. You know with 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 uh, with Japanese battleships with wave motion guns. And so you know th- 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 there were a lot of influences in uh, in the media at the time that sort of shaped that uh, is is my suspicion. I remember when it came out, I was very excited. Um, the enhanced character generation that you referred to in, in High Guard was similar to the enhanced character generation in, in Mercenary, the book four Mercenary, and it was um, it created characters that were much much more capable than the characters in uh, Classic Traveler, which generally only had um, a, a single handful of skills. Um, but but uh, High Guard created, created characters that could 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 come out of, of character generation with uh, a couple of dozen skills. Um, you know, it, it was it was a, it was a hugely different scale, um, and it, it created sort of a mismatch. I think that may have been some, some of the driver that um, you know they, they went on to to, to publish a, a bunch of other books uh, for Classic Traveler, but then uh, they sort of turned the corner and Mega Traveler came out, and they changed. Uh, they, they 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 really sort of started to flesh out the setting uh, for for real. Uh, you know, with with, with Mega Traveler. And um, and and they sort of they unified the character generation system, so everyone was operating on the same sort of playing field. Because in Classic Traveler, you had um, that, um, there was a, a scouts book, there was a, a, a Merchant Prince, I think, finally came out, and you had High Guard and Mercenary. But but the rest of the of the citizenry, the rest of the career paths, were represented by um, the, the very basic character generation with these with the results of characters that, that by comparison pale, they had very few skills, they weren't any good at anything. But these characters coming out of the enhanced character generation that went year by year instead of uh, instead of four year terms at a time. And, and in any given year, you could go to a school and get four or five skills. I mean, it was possible to build characters that were just monsters by classic traveler standards. Wow. Okay, yeah, I, I see that here. I noticed that uh, I, I guess I hadn't dug that far, but what I noticed was this granularity about being a, a, a Navy man. You know, like you could be an enlisted or an officer, and then if you were uh, beyond that, an officer, you could be an officer of the line, or you could be, a, you know, and, and, it, and it mimics the U.S. Navy, it seems like. I don't know. Uh, it seems almost like an ode, an ode to the, to the U.S. Navy or something. But um, And then the other thing that I found interesting is... Um, it, it completely seems to overhaul Starship Combat. I don't know if that's supposed to apply to the game as a whole, but suddenly it, it enters something more like what resembles modern Starship Combat away from a war game um, and that I would see in later games. Sure. Well, the, the, well, the original classic Traveler, the, 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 the little three black, the three little little black books, the LBBs. So they were they were really. Um, you know, before that, um, and Mark Miller and, and and associates had been working on tabletop simulations of various sorts. Um, you know, the Traveler really grew out of the tabletop, the, the strategic game Imperium. Um, the ch- jump one through six, the, the the characteristics of the starships grew out of the, uh, the the limitations that you had for for a tactical board game, and and so that that you know, they just sort of drilled down. And got down to to a lower, more granular level with a role playing game, to, to to go along with to, to as an accompaniment to Dungeons and Dragons that had recently been released. Mark said, "Oh, well, we can drill down another level, and we can do this, you know, for for this 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 Imperium thing we have going on, and we can just take a lot of the same things we have and bake it in." It's you know that was the hammer that he had, 
and so the the, the the resulting work was made with that hammer and it it, it 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 had a lot of its simulationist roots showing a lot of the tabletop tactical game showing and high guard was sort of um you know they had a few years to 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 to, to work on it a bunch of articles and fanzines and so forth that had had made a lot of recommendations for overhauls and so forth and um and and, and so and mercenary was was a, a big expansion on that by, by comparison so so compared to today's ex, you know 270 page expansions uh, you know at mercenary and high guard were maybe 30 pages 30 48 pages something like that you know so as and they were the trade back size so as far as uh, you know the mass of the expansion they were tiny but they did a good job of packing a lot of new conceptual stuff in there there wasn't a lot of fluff it was all very spare there was you you've seen it it's a ton of charts you know um uh, uh, shipbuilding, you know, it's light on description, it's heavy on crunch, you know, which which is is not surprising coming out of the uh, the, the, the 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 tabletop is still it, it's had roots in the tabletop uh, tactical and strategic games that they were doing. I mean, I remember bringing Squad Leader back in the day, and the rule set for that was oh, it was four four or five hundred pages. Wow, you know, it it was immensely complex. Yeah, um, I. Uh... I don't think uh, I don't think we're gonna apply anything beyond book three with the 1981 errata uh, to our current campaign. But a lot of this stuff, um, it's got me geeking out. Now yeah. it looks like the series of books, um, and I don't mean this is like a pejorative or something, but like to call them splat books. But you've got book one, two, and three, and then they kept going. Book four, five, six, seven, so on, so forth then on and on and on and then book a zero one so on and so forth and on and on and on um and so they they did all this the stuff that they would add like you said in classic traveler but it looks to me like mongoose has has chosen that route like that that they have like hey here's the very core of the game and now here's a filled supply catalog here's here's a big book of ships here's a big book of this you know and um um Hmm. yeah one thing that they were very smart in doing was separating the ship creation rules out of the core book and putting them into I, high guard. I didn't for, remember for, that, did they? That, well, they did that between first and second edition, yeah. First edition's right. core book had ship creation rules in it, second edition does not. It has a lot of ships, but it does not have the creation rules. Interesting. The second, the, 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 the second edition, the, the revised core book, has, has basic shipbuilding back in it. Oh, Oh, the so, twenty the twenty twenty two update. Yeah, the the twenty twenty two or twenty twenty three. Yeah, the, the 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 most recent update of the core core rules has has basic ship construction in it, so you can make okay. the small adventure class ships. And which I, which I which I do expansion. own, but uh, some yeah. for some reason that <laughs> see that that's how. But it did stick because I really yeah. liked I really liked first edition a lot. Um, it's it, it is it is fun for me to hear about this this genesis because as, as we've been playing classic traveler. When I first started playing, I remember one of the things I remember saying to Ross, and I remember, I mean, I, I was mistaken when I said this, but I said um, something along the lines of, the math shakes out to the same as it is in Mongoose. Now, that was not exactly correct, but actually the more I've played it, the more I, like, what what Mongoose has achieved, you know, uh, and I, and I actually wanted to act like, like wow, well, we've got you here because you yeah. seem you, you seem pretty well versed on the history of the thing. Um, I, 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 I lived it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I lived so, it. so, so, so then I, I would just love to know, um, at what point did the um, we had a chance to speak a little bit earlier today, just random chatting about role playing games, and we talked. You talked about you know the. That simulationist, uh, the '70s design, you know, and Ross and I have mentioned that more than once, you know. And like, I'm a huge fan of a game called Kingmaker, for example, Avalon Hill tabletop game. I'm, I'm familiar um, with it. Yeah. Well, and, and and I mean, this was I bought that game when I was 11, and and this was my introduction to the to the wonders of that early design, <laughs> um, where 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 they they were not concerned with complete verisimilitude, um, or complete yeah. consistency. Um, but you, so you got all these systems just sort of randomly spread about throughout the book. At what point did Traveler begin to unify a dice system 
and and do away with the fiddly bits of you only get your strength bonus if you have a strength of 11 when you use your cutlass and all that kind of stuff. So so uh, Mega Traveler really started to standardize that. Um, they they put out a unified task system in Mega Traveler. That was the the, the earliest place. I, th I think it had originally been proposed in in a, in an article in a, in, a, in a fanzine. It was a it was something out of a I don't know if it was a Challenge magazine or White Dwarf or some you know it, 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 one of the early fan fan so uh, fan pretty works. early then. They, they, yeah, yeah. They realized the need pretty early on. It, 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 yeah, classic traveler was a bit disjointed. It was a bit. Uh, it was a bit sort of seat of the pants, which is which, which. My understanding is the way is generally the way that Mark runs his runs his own personal games, in spite of the fact so, that that he's built T five, which is yeah. which is this this monument to fiddly bits. <laughs> I remember Ross. We were talking to Stan about traveler uh, at some point and i mentioned t5 and i was like i want to be able to run t5 and stan was like mark doesn't even run t5 no no no, no. yeah yeah i i know of two people that run t5 and i'm not surprised <laughs> so all right. It's so, more of it, yeah. Anyway, we've gotten off. But, but yeah, a yeah, uh, high guard though. So, so they brought in. So yeah. So I have here. This is uh, the Mongoose Traveler Second Edition uh, High Guard. Um, and uh, just skimming over some of the stuff it has here, uh, it has a really in-depth section about weapons. It has different types of weapons, different like an energy weapon sizes of weapons, uh, and then it mentions uh, essentially. Um, space naval tactics which uh, the original high guard does as well inclu including uh, uh, screens and uh, and then you've got um, uh, you can build a space station which is freaking cool uh, and um, and then interestingly it has belt mining which I didn't dig into the rules for but we're just about to get back to Bowman uh, and look at belt strike so uh, I don't think they're actually going to do any mining, but I wonder, you know, if they just uh, the, resurrected the, the some things. Well, yeah, the the, mi the mining rules in Traveler have have always been problematic at best. The, the reality Interesting. is, well, well, so 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 work, follow me for a second. So the reality is that m mining in space would is going to go one of two ways. Um, you know, and, and neither way is going to be a, is going to be good for role playing opportunities. So you, you know, if if right. if, if, you're a, if you're if you're a miner, if you're if you're not assuming mass mass scale automated mining of asteroid belts and so forth, where you have where you're going to quickly have a surplus of those raw materials, and even the most precious metal, you know, they're going to find megatons of it, and you know, it's it, it you know it's it, 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 none of them are gonna really going to have any value. Unless you're operating on industrial scales, so right. um, okay. But so so if you have the lone prospector out looking to stake his claim and find the the mother load, that's that's great for fiction. There's a lot of these concepts that they work great in fiction, but in a role playing game, they just don't work as well. Because you know, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a roll. I didn't find anything. I'm make a roll. I didn't find anything. You know, I'm gonna make 50 rolls and not find anything, and then and then. The RNG gods, the the dice gods, are going to come together. Okay, I'm a trillionaire. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The belt strike is I, I, like that because you have just yeah. stuff that's not really useful for its tonnage, and then what it calls uh, radioactives in general. Which right. if you manage to get a hold of radioactives, now you've got you're, like one million credits per ton, and you've okay. you've struck gold. Um, and I, I, it makes me think. I I, I was. I have a curiosity and fascination with those pages and pages of tables, uh, and, and so I'm interested. But yeah, it would be weird to play that out. Maybe Father Chris, maybe we ought to try. I don't know, just see yeah. what it what it looks like. But but we actually the we elements actually of that. it. Some of the elements, and this is, you know, like uh, there's this si simulationist renaissance. Like there are different people that are like, hey, maybe we can have s some more of this simulation. Um, and some of those elements I like is that um, in Bowman, in Belt Strike, um, depending on how close you are to the gas giant, you have a risk of exposure to radiation under certain conditions. So Absolutely. what what it become the, the, 
the simulation part that could be, I think, really fascinating is one of those things that it matters once it matters. And uh, yeah. what, what, what we've had happen in Classic Traveler is a lot of those things, like how unlikely it is that you could be in a position to have a drive malfunction. But then once all those elements come together, it is thrilling and horrifying. And, you know, so, uh, but, but actually nugging through all those numbers for mining sounds, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. 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 We actually, on, on, on the Traveler, um, the, 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 the Traveler Discord server, not the Mongoose Discord server, but there's a Traveler RPG Discord server that's been around since right. er, early, early 2017. And I, I was I, I was very active, um, um, not right from the beginning. I didn't I didn't hop onto it until about six months after it it it, it, uh, it it was a thing. There were a couple hundred users at the time. I think there are about four thousand users now. So I was a mod for for uh, for, for a couple of years, um, 20, uh, 20, early twenty eighteen through through twenty twenty, and then I, I I drifted away. It, it got big enough, and and um, s some of the more vocal elements came in, and it just became not. It, it wasn't my scene anymore. It, it, it wasn't a bunch of old farts. It was a, a, a bunch of the, the loud young kids came in, and they had very different ideas about, about how they wanted to do things. But we we did a thing. We did role playing stuff um, on the server. We had multiple Discord channels, and voice channels, and, and and I was in a. It, it, we had a. Uh, a a space station. Um, uh, I remember uh, it was uh, it, yeah it was it was one of the big um, the, the 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 big capital systems in um, in the Spinner Marches. But the, the, I'm having a senior moment. The name's escaping me. But it, 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 it was it was that big state space station, and we and 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 a bunch of pe people on on the server did role playing in, interactive stuff on the server. And one of the things we did was we went out and we did some belt mining. Um, so, so uh, at Winged Cat uh, is, is 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 he's one of the administrators there now. He um, um, he he ran a little game, and we we went and did some belt mining, and uh, yeah, we went out for about a month, and we made a bunch of mining of of, of of sensor checks and mining rolls, and nothing, 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 and then okay, we made uh, we, we made fourteen billion credits between the three of us, and so <laughs> we up and came back, and okay, we, we can all buy travel. Credits. The yeah, traveling yeah, has done. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Our 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 month of, of adventuring, which consisted of 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 watching the sensors until we found the mother load, the, the mother load, and then you know, it, it, a traveler has only ever made a nod towards simulations. It's it really it's it's space opera. It's it's space opera. The the characters that um, in, citizens of the of the Imperium or citizens of the Empire. Um, or, or, yeah, yeah, citizens this, this, of the Imperium. Yeah, Citizen of the Imperium but from Classic Traveler. So it's got some example citizen characters that that you can have in your world. And if and, and a, a quick analysis shows that those are are are, are characters from science fiction, um, like uh, Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader and other luminaries from 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 literature and and, and the mo the movies today. And you know and, and, and those those sorts of characters. It's it, it it was pulp. It was space opera with a nod towards simulationism. That, that some of the others didn't have that sort of you know kept travel a little bit grounded because it was rooted in that the the, the, the sci-fi of the 40s 50s 60s 70s the and 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 more of the hard science but but if, if you're if you're um, if you're well read on the science fiction from that era it wasn't hard science there's some later stuff came along where where, where you had more people like Asimov and hard scientists that were actually writing speculative fiction where it was speculative fiction and they were really digging they were building things off of uh the existing real science um there are a couple of astrophysicists that write that write sci-fi and they they base everything in, in in their in their settings off of yeah this is this is this is stuff that we that that, that they've gamed out that they've talked about i got the math on it you know it's, you know they, they did the math it's this could work <laughs> yeah i'm I see here. I'm looking at the belt mining section, and it is it's a, it's a lot of charts, and it, it is basically um, exactly belt strike. It's it's the yeah, same yeah. rules. Uh, you have yeah, zones, is, and yeah. you fake yeah. it till you make it. Yeah, there the, in the in the revision of High Guard for Mongoose Two, they took the belt mining out, and oh. uh, and and it's going to be in its own book. Um, my understanding is it's going to be in its own book, but but, but that got pulled out. Um, a section on 
on the roles of the various crew members in, in a starship got introduced. That's like 15 pages. And um, and there was a, a, a rewrite of the section on fleet combat because the original high guard um, fleet combat was something that um, that 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 Matt Sprang, um, at Mongoose Matt, that, that he 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 sat and whapped together over, over over a weekend the original fleet combat rules, and he admits that it's awful. <laughs> you know, so you know, but but Chris Chris one of the Chris Griffin, the primary author on, on the the most recent High Guard, he, he he went on vacation with his with his wife, um, and while he was there, he he got a brainstorm and he wrote a, a, the, the the chapter in fleet combat, came back and said, okay, here it is, it's what we're gonna do. Okay, it's your your name on the author line. So you know, I, 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 I'm I'm just a I'm 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 just I'm, I'm just an arch, assistant architect. So you know. <laughs> All right. So yeah. Um, uh, let's see. So you got. Well, actually, let, let me start with this. I, and I don't know if this is still in here, but this is fun. It's like it. This product maybe was made by a British company. It says this. It says uh, uh, abusing the ship's locker. The purpose of the ship's locker is to provide useful mundane equipment on demand so travelers do not have to keep track of every single flak jacket toolkit. It is not an inexhaustible supply of free stuff, nor is it a magic box that produces whatever travelers happen to need at any given moment. Referees should sternly refuse any unreasonable request regarding the contents of the ship's locker. It is a tool to simplify bookkeeping. <laughs> Mongoose, Mongoose is a British company. <laughs> so they are a British company. So and and yeah, the, yeah, the, ship, the ship's locker isn't the magic box that things come out of. That's Fabers that uh, that 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 when when Gear did the rewrite of, uh, but the, yeah, the Fabers were introduced in the robots book first, and then they were uh, more clearly delineated in um, in the uh, the. Uh, the the, the the CSC, the uh, Central Supply Catalog, uh, the, uh, fa the Fabers, uh, it, 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 you know, sci science fiction 3D printing, you know, uh, you know, where, where you, you fabrication machines to, yeah. to make things. That's, that's where you get that. That's where you get the magic boxes that things come out of. Huh. There, there's constraints on it, but um, you know, it it can be more expensive to fabricate something than it can be to go buy it, as as, as it should be because. You know the economies of scale that actual manufacturers using actual non-bespoke manufacturing, you know, processes. You know, the, the, the large-scale automation. You know, that it drives efficiencies. That's how businesses do their thing. So right. if you're making 50 billion of something, as opposed to I need one Gauss rifle, as opposed to I'm making 50 billion <laughs> Gauss rifles. Yeah, di di different processes, I would imagine, and uh, you know, economies of scale and the components and so forth. I want to, uh, you know, cause one of the things that I think that definitely drew me to Traveler is what drew, one of the things that really drew me to role, role playing at all before I even knew what a role playing game was or what system. Which is internal excitement and internal perspective. Worship. Cool. And so, and so, <laughs> and so, right. So, and, and whatever. So, so maybe you can talk a bit about the process of trying to create a product that can that is meant to help generate and maintain that feeling within, you know, at the table um, and amongst a, sure. a group. Well, I, well, so so I I, I I I I can speak to my experience working on the Hygar project and um, a, a number of of other as yet unpublished project projects I've worked on over the years and forty five years of of running games. So um, what we tried to do with High Guard was we tried to uh, we we tried to so 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 fun at the table was really sort of the overriding goal. So so Chris had a had a vision where he wanted to to really sort of lean back to the classic traveler sort of um, sort of thought process of philosophies on some things, um, and and um, so a, a big. A, a big stumbling block. Um, so Chris, Chris is a very, very good writer. Um, he, you, know, you know, mechanics are not his strong point, and he was, you know, we, we struggled with the mechanics for a long time. And I kept, I kept after him of, 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 you know, just, just, just come up with what do you, what does the story need to tell? What story are you trying to tell? You know, you get that locked down and give that a shake, and the game mechanics just drop right out. And and I finally was able to 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 to, to, to get him to. 
Um, he's a he's a writer. It, it, his 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 back his, his, his degree in, in in English literature, uh, but he's been a technical writer. So he's you know it, you know he's he's betwixt and between. But it, but I, I I basically said, look, you know, you've got a you, you you're writing a novel. Your protagonist is on the command deck of a of a of a of a of a, of a battleship of a of a fleet carrier of a of, you know of a capital ship. You're overseeing the battle. What's happening out there? What's that person see? What happens when the battleships, when the cruisers, when the destroyers? What happens when they open up on each other? And then a, a big thing we did in, in in the latest High Guard was we rebalanced all the weapon systems so that military weapons are terrifying now. So so barbettes were were basically just sort of hopped up turrets. Well now they're you know they blow big holes in little ships. You know they're heavier weapons. And then you've got your 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 other the increasingly large scale weapons that just do enormous amounts of damage to things. Um, and, and, but, but that's sort of, you know, start, start with the picture of what you want the story to tell, uh, or, or what, what story you want to tell and then, and, and then design for that. You build the game mechanics to, to, to pr provide that experience. And, um, you know, and, 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 and there was, it was a lot of work put in to provide more color for a lot of the components that go into building ships because, when you're constructing a ship, um, you know if, if you're a gearhead at all, um, and, in, and especially if you're not a gearhead, if you're not just interested in the speeds and feeds, you want to know. Well, what's the description of this thing I'm putting in? Is it cool? <laughs> so, you know, you know, is it a fun thing? Am I excited when I look at the description of my ship and all the various things that are in it? Is that exciting? And and out of that came a bunch of things that didn't make it into high guard for being able to do little the the little, the, the little tweaks you know to for, for 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 players to even to 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 more in a more detailed fashion provide more customizations to their ships not in big broad swaths but the little fine tuning and the little tweaks that make each ship an individual and 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 make each ship unique and and that's you know that's a fun thing because in traveler the the common sort of setting there's there's a lot of ways for 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 the, for the players to end up with a ship and the ship becomes their home and another character and it's central to a lot of plot things because a lot of the action takes place on or around or because of the ship so it's important that that they that that you have a lot of descriptive stuff a lot of the fluff so they can feel connected to it they have descriptive and that's description so they can build that mental picture so they know what what's going on they get an idea of, of, of what it looks like when they walk under the ship and that's a lot of that's, that's something that we we do a lot of at our table with, with the role playing is is we you know we spend a lot of time geeking out and drilling down into what that stuff is like because because you're right the the excitement of oh I'm a you know I'm a pilot or I'm a this I'm a that I think that was what drove Chris to really to really expand out the way he did on the roles of the various crew members on a ship because not everybody is going to be the pilot not everybody's going to be the gunner you know and and some of those roles that you think would be super exciting piloting for instance is pretty boring you know even in space combat it comes down to like one role every combat round it, it, you know there's there's not a lot for you to do there's not a lot you know un, until you get into the descriptive of okay we're going to do this da, 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 you know and, and you can you know you can sort of role play your way through it and then, and then you get to make your role you know, you know the, 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 the gunners get to shoot things the engineers okay i'm going to push the maneuver drives and okay i'm going to you know i'm going to i'm going to make my role and my, my engineering power plant role and i'm going to you know i'm going to i'm going to Increase it's, the output. It is very amusing how, because uh, we, we've talked before about how a, a good handle on the tropes of of this kind of science fiction is almost essential to be able to play oh, Traveler yeah. successfully. Yeah. Um, and the game doesn't necessarily. It, it's not really the game's job to teach all of that, but but I think it, there's a way you can not. do it. You can sort of introduce. You can. But anyway, um, you you mentioned weaponry. And there's a thing that that has just stuck in my mind, and it could be another one of those things where I was mistaken. <laughs> but um, the missile rules in Mongoose One. Horrible, horrible. Okay, okay. Now, now I and, and I and I agree that they were horrible. But the only detail of of the horribleness that sticks is when I was looking at ship creation, and I suddenly asked myself. Is it possible to make a ship that could never be damaged by missiles as they're presented in this book? Because the way I re remember reading it, crystal iron armor 
provides enough protection to where because because missile damage in old traveler and 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 i assume it, you know also and also in t5 and in the i think i had to basically invent a new kind of missile for the game i was running which was really the old missile from uh from classic traveler because right. because the old missile or at least there was an old missile that did dd damage right or dd6 or d6 d6 something like that Whereas the missile in MGT one, I remember if I remember correctly, is, is, is just like is like a straight two D six. Yeah, something like that. And your crystal well, iron crystal iron armor is going to give you like fourteen points of armor or something like that. So, well, so you, you would have to have the armor damaged in some way by like a capital ship weapon well, for the missiles to even be able to get through. So you're close. So 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 um, um, the, the 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 basic mechanics in in Mongoose two are are built on the mechanics from Mongoose one. And um, armor is a da is a damage reduction mechanism. Um, crystal iron is just is is like tech level twelve. It's the material that tech level twelve armor is made of, and you can have anywhere from four points to to to, to, to twelve points of, of crystal iron armor. At tech level fourteen, you can have bonded super dense, which is lighter. Bonded, sorry, bonded and, super dense. That yeah, was it. Yeah, it's lighter and tougher, and and bonded super dense can go up to the tech level of of, of the vessel, so you can have up to fifteen points. Well, we in uh, in 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 the the re in, in 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 the second release of High Guard, the revised High Guard uh, for for Mongoose Two, the High Guard Twenty Twenty Two, that one. Anyway, we um, we added a trait to vessels to because to, to, a, a big a big a big thing that I went into High Guard with um, that I wanted to that I wanted to make my mark, and I think I succeeded, was that there's no differentiation between military and civilian vessels in any of the prior works. You can have a ship that's armored up, you can have a ship with big guns, oh, and it can have a ton of cargo space, and it can, you know, oh, and in times of war, you can you can slap guns on anything, and it's now a warship. But but there wasn't anything to indicate that something had been designed, because the, the design of a main battle tank is very different than the design of, um, you know, of, a, of a civilian, you know, of a, of a land rover, you know, you know some, some, some big civilian thing. You know the the design of a of a of a, of a Bradley and, and design of a of, of, of a civilian thing they're very different. The design of a of a luxury yacht and a Coast Guard cutter are very different. They're built from the ground up. So for the larger vessels, I I, I wasn't able to get it you know get it all the way in the beginning. But we we, we rebalanced the armor a bit because in um, in in Mongoose two you could build fighters that had armor that was as heavy as that on 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 on, on your main battleships oh, wow. you have the heaviest armor on fighters that that could do 25 g's so it was it was ridiculous you, you should it's some of the fan designs that came that, that came out of the the various the, the, the various forums and discord servers were yeah. uh, were, were obscene and so we, we 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 put in things like a multiplier for our for, for armor based on tonnage so if you're small the amount of the, 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 the amount of armor that you can put on or the the amount um, so, you, so there's an armor divisor for the little bitty for the little bitty fighters you know, so your little lightweight wasp fighter is only going to be able to ever have three or four points of armor and and that's going to be pretty heavy on it you know that's it's going to be a, a big chunk of its of its volume is going to be this armor that's only going to give it three or four points because it's tiny it doesn't have room to put thick thick, thick plating but then yeah. there's a mil a military trait that you can apply to a hull that um, that that builds it, so you can you can take the armor up to like thirty. That's so you know? interesting. Yeah, you know? I mean it's it's funny because you mentioned like well we've talked before about traveler having roots. I mean, and uh, it has a groundedness to it. Um, it tries. It, it, it tries. Yes. Well, it, it's it's. It, it might we, be worth, uh, and I'll point. I've mentioned this before, but sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I just want to throw this in here too, Father Chris. Is the I'd listened to a piece recently. This idea that maybe there's not so much science fiction anymore, and what the person meant was that what we call science fiction encompasses things like speculative fiction and all kinds of other things, and that. Um, it seems like Traveler is grounded in science fiction, even if it's, uh, I agree, it, it seems like space opera, um, especially uh, what I get from the implied setting, never mind the later materials of, of the explicitly stated setting, but uh, it, it's hard to, which is fun, and it's great. But even then, though, even then, uh, 
compared to what is what else is out there on the market and what is commonly played uh good luck finding a popular hard sci-fi game you know it's just uh it's just not something that you know this is this is it <laughs> if there's well, going to be well, a hard sci-fi game it's going to be you know well, well well they've tried doing harder sci-fi with things like 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 an expanse role-playing game and and expanse type supplements because because the, the tv show expanse is very very rooted in right. in real sense but they've got they've got physicists you know on on set as consultants that say okay you could do this and you know it, most of the things that they're doing are very real they don't have faster than light they don't have uh you know they, they, they don't have gravity control they don't have a lot of those things um you know they use they use spin for gravity they use acceleration for gravity that's that's what they use the rest of the time you're floating around um you know and and, and until you get into the the, the, Clark, the Clark tech um, you know, in Arthur C. Clarke, any 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 sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So the Clark tech of the was the precursors, I think they called it in the expanse, that that, that let them uh, jump between star systems and so forth. That was was really where the the where 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 went where, where went into into space fantasy, and you know you've got space magic you know, and so forth. Um, but 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 yeah yeah yeah. Traveler tries to what well it's it, it has a Thing that so most of the other sci-fi games are, are rooted in some IP that doesn't have to follow or, or doesn't choose to follow rules of world building. You know, it, it doesn't it doesn't try and build. Oh, we're going to build political systems that sort of try and make sense. We're going to build trade routes that sort of make sense and take into account what sorts of of raw materials and products would be produced by various worlds and so forth. And that sort and you know you know we're going to build political systems and social structures. And, you know, and that sort of thing, I think, um, it, it really, it, it does, it's, I mean, there, there, there's a, there are boundaries, but there's, there's super soft boundaries because you can take or leave any part of it at, at your individual table, but it provides a structure. You're, you're, you're not wrong that, that, that there aren't a lot of hard sci-fi games out there. You know, if, if there are really any that are of note, um, but, but uh, aside from travel, travel, you know, it, like I said, and it's still it's space opera, but it makes the nod towards simulationist. It and it, it at least pretends. <laughs> I, and I apologize, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Father Chris. I was just oh, no. throwing in oh, sorry. my. No, uh, it's fine. I, 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 yeah, I was just com coming up with heart with um with high guard uh, uh, stuff because it's stuff that you know just in my own traveler experience. It's funny that you mention um, purpose built military vessels versus. Uh, I mean the. Uh, the first Traveler game I ran was an MGT1 game, and I made the mistake that I had made before in other games, which is giving my players way too much power and say over what kind of a thing they got to start with. But hey, they rolled a heck of a lot of ship shares, so I figured, That's, what the heck. That can be and fun. So I, yeah, I let them design their own ship. And they designed a ship that was, uh, because, and they were, I was starting them off on Mora. I explicitly said, you nice. know, okay, you're in a tech, high tech level and everything else, and, you know, and so they, they designed themselves a jump three capable fat trader with super dense, uh, you know, bonded super dense armor and, and, um, the shipyards uh, of Mora are famous for producing vessels like that. Right. Pop up <laughs> turret, pop up turrets. And then they named the ship the Penguin because one of my friends is a big history buff, and he was naming it after a, I believe it was a German World War One merchant vessel that was that had a a, a main like a ship gun. That was a hidden, pop up. It was hidden within the middle of it that they could just take away yeah. some some stuff and they could just blast away, like just take so, ships by surprise and hold them below the waterline and and, and then just light. go away. That's yeah, so. Light. So, so that was so. Ours was the so it was the campaign was entitled "Flight of the Penguin," and uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, but yeah, the, the the vicissitudes of the missile rules are a fascinating thing when you think, like like Mark Miller or whoever it was is putting the missiles together in the first in the early days, is thinking about, I guess, nuclear warheads, or, or but, potentially like clearly two D six does not represent a nuclear warhead. <laughs> No, in a well, ship-to-ship well, ship battle. Well, in, in classic traveler, in ship-to-ship -ship battle, um, um, especially, um, I can't remember if in classic. I think in in starships, it was all fairly straightforward. But then Highgard introduced weapon factors and so forth, and that's where you know, you know, if you had the bigger ships that had, you know, that that, that had it had tens, dozens, hundreds of missile of missile turrets that were organized into batteries, and 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 so you know, you know, he had a semi-logarithmic tables 
so that if you had this many, it was this factor of missile or this factor of laser versus this factor of shielding or this much armor. And, you know, and that's what a lot of the tables are uh, for, for, the, for the ship combat was to to to, to compare the, the you know the, the your missile factor. You know, oh, I've got you know I, I've got uh, you know you know ten one hundred ton missile bays. That I'm gonna and I'm gonna unload, you know, because it's a, I, I have a I have a you know a heavy cruiser that's a missile boat and it's you know I'm gonna I'm gonna be dumping thousands of missiles on you. Battlestar um, Galactica did a really good job of of that showing that like the the scale of like a large missile attack. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 It's the the, the uh, uh, Honor Harrington that that, mm-hmm. that that sort of science fiction. You know, you're you know you're you're launching, you know, you're launching salvos of hundreds of missiles. And you know, if if I, I do a lot of visualization of what's going on, and and, and 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 I can close my eyes and I can see, you know, a ship launching a salvo of thousands of missiles, and the the the, the clouds of shaft, the, the sand, the shaft being thrown up, and the the, the 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 beam lasers on the other missiles slicing across swaths of the missiles and and, and, and taking them out, so you, so you can reduce the impact of the the merely dozens of missiles that are still arriving to come right. hammering into your ship, you know, yeah. and, 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 and ripping up big ships. You've got armor and one missile by itself isn't going to do anything, but with the, 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 uh, the, 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 the weapon factors, you know, that some, some there, it's still going to, it's, it's going to do some stuff. It isn't just one missile. It's those dozens, you know, s- sort of factored together. And, 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 and now, you know, they're going to, you're going to, going to peel your ship like a grape, you know, Something has occurred to me as we're talking about this is that we've talked about up until just now, really, when we start, start talking about High Guard and you, you yourself, you specifically worked on the large scale, like capital ship weapons stuff. But we haven't talked about that at all, really. I mean, because that's not really the, it's in, the, the existence of High Guard is kind of fascinating in its, in its own right because it's not, High Guard isn't really about. The classic traveler experience, if you if you it's want not. to put it that way, it's not. It's, it's about like a almost um, you might call it not one shots, but like it would be a specialty traveler campaign if it was focused on like the actual operation of capital ships and huge battles and stuff. There's a there's a published campaign that's designed around a, 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 around manning a capital ship, the Element Cruiser, and there's a there's a whole campaign built around that. Um, uh, Deep Night Revelation, another mongoose the Mongoose second edition product you're you're in another uh you're in a it's a 60,000 ton ship it's a capital ship um i think uh a, a mega traveler had you were manning in azanti high lightning and you were you know another a frontier cruiser a big a big monster ship um there, there aren't any there aren't any published games that i recall that feature the the the, the famous traveler pac-man of death the uh the 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 maison spewing tigress uh, uh Dreadnought coming in, clocking in at half a million tons. So this this <laughs> yeah, thing yeah. this thing snuck up on me. Now I, I want to point yeah. out, uh, and I've mentioned this a few times. I'm I'm fairly new, uh, and and so uh, and, and initially I wanted uh, to to running traveler. Uh, I'm a uh, I love Dungeons and Dragons, and then I discovered uh, classical Dungeons and Dragons, and then I sort of traveler has been intimidating to me for a long time. And I, and I decided eventually, I was like, this is a challenge worth embracing. And I've had a lot of fun with the challenge. Uh, and Father Chris and I have talked about how uh, it, I, I think it is a challenge. I think, uh, I think it takes, uh, and, and just as a very simple example, one of the things that I, I, I've mentioned several times, in Dungeons & Dragons, you, everyone knows what a door is, and a ceiling, and a window, and a tunnel, and uh, all of the terrestrial elements of a structure, every human being on the planet knows what they are. Most human beings on the planet are fairly familiar with how long it would take them to walk, you know, how long they would travel in five minutes versus one hour on foot. Um, they know what a, a road to heal, a so-and-so. A terrestrial life is common to us. But, but this section of Traveler right here, uh, where it talks about, like, you know, it takes you, you know, it's uh, 400,000 kilometers to a satellite of a world. It's 10,000 kilometers to get from the surface to orbit at 1G. What even is 1G? Like, seriously, like, I don't think most, most people would know. Uh, but if you're traveling at 1G, uh, 10,000 kilometers, it takes 2,000 seconds. Distance equals rate times time and force equals mass time. This is not a terrestrial experience. 
most people day to day we don't have that experience so it, it takes uh, maybe genre literacy I think is one barrier I'd be interested in your thoughts about barriers to entry as well that's a that's a conversation we bring up a lot uh, but also um, uh, maybe uh, uh, some some scientific and and uh, like uh, uh, some some acumen with just like um, yeah, the laws of, of, of physics and things, uh, which is, I think, what Father Chris and I were talking about. Like, uh, uh, it does seem like there are, there are things that, that it's bound to. Like, uh, a jump is going to take you about 168 hours or so. And stuff like that is not, um, I guess you could hand wave it, you know, but like, um, you, put all you, the, you put all those things together, and, and you have like all these various laws, which. In D and D, I don't think is is too onerous because again, it's a common experience. But in this, it's it's out a there. A fireball, a fireball fills thirty three thousand cubic feet. Indeed, uh, you know, a, a lightning bolt is you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess I, 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 I guess I, that's I, a good point. I, I don't I, suppose everybody yeah. thinks about fireballs every day. That's I, true. I've I, I've done my time. <laughs> that's I've a done good my time. point. Uh, yeah. So. Um, but I want to return to that. I want to return to this idea of like barriers to entry. But, but so here I am, fairly new traveler. I open this book, High Guard, okay, and right. I get and the, one of the first things is this admonition uh, or this uh, this admonishment more about not abusing ships' lockers, which I loved. I, I laughed out loud when I read that. And then the next thing I get to, this is beautiful because whoever's the artist of this succeeded at what they were trying to do because they knew I'm a millennial and I'm just skipping through this stuff. And I see these uh, these ships here, and I'm like, oh, man, that is so cool, these ships. And the design is cool, and I'm like, wait, wait what is that? And I look at this <laughs> ship, and it's bigger, and then it yeah. slowly draws me up here. I'm like, wait, what? What is that? Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah that background is deep. Oh, gigantic. wait, that's a ship. <laughs> that's a ship. Yeah. What is that? Yeah, and, that's uh, the, the, the Tigris Pac-Man of Doom. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, now I want to figure out what that thing is because that's so cool. So yeah, that uh, that 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 was a pleasant uh, surprise today when I opened uh, High Guard and started looking through it. Yeah, I, well, I, so so speaking of barriers to entry, so I so I started playing travel when I was I was uh, I, 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 I I was not yet a teenager when I started playing travel. Um, you know, I I probably got my hot little hands on the little black books. Um, probably not more than six months after they first hit the shelves and and we we tore into it and started playing classic traveler you know in, i was in middle school um and uh you know and and it it asked a lot of questions that that uh, that, that that my friends and i didn't know all the answers to um and and i was a i was a geeky little kid and i uh, i took the opportunity to teach myself orbital mechanics and, uh, wow. you know, and, and 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 you know the the, the the equations around acceleration you know it, you know calculating you know the the, the the time acceleration what is 1g you know 9.8 meters per second per second what Although does that Mark mean Miller claims it's 10 but uh, what well, well, well yeah yeah but he also claims a ton is either 13.5 or 14 cubic meters <laughs> depending on the addition of the book and so forth so well and and, and in, in fairness if you just round it up to 10, I mean, it's a game. It's it's right, right, it's, yeah. it's okay to round it, you know, from nine point eight to ten meters per second. That's right. that's you know, it's not going to make you or break me. It's not you know, I'll I'll, I'll give you that. That's fine. Um, but you know, but but you can learn. And, oh, oh, you, you know, and 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 I and I took it a little further. And I'm 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 waiting for retirement so I can go finish a PhD in physics because that's because that's the kind of geek that I am. I I love that stuff, um, and and that's where my interest is. But I uh, you know it. Much like D and D world building in D and D sparked uh, an interest in me for uh, history and geography and weather patterns and you know you know and That's ecologies point, yeah. and all those things you know and well do you, you don't have to know all those things to play D and D any more than you have to know how to how to calculate orbital insertion you know uh, around you know. Uh, 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 a planet with a that's that, that's got a radius of of, of eight thousand kilometers and a specific density, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know, you don't have to, to to be able to calculate that orbit because the the the, the magic maneuver drives are constant acceleration. You put your you, you drive yourself to wherever you need to be and, and you carry on. And there's there's an awful lot that you can hand wave because really, 
I, I you know, I, so, so I, I and, and maybe I'm looking at this from, you know, from the other end of 45 years experience. Traveler is super simple. There's a 2D, for most of the editions, there's a 2D6 basic mechanic. You're shooting for an eight or better for, uh, for success, for most sort of mod moderately difficult, dramatic actions. Um, you know, you can modify the difficulty up or down, you know, you know depending on what you want to do. Um, I, I often use those roles that I, I'll call for skill roles a lot in my games for color. You know, you know, I, I'll, you know based on what their skill role is, I use that to describe how well they did the thing if it's a thing that a, a, a professional could reasonably do in a, in a workman like fashion, you know, somebody who has a skill is a professional and they've done it and, you know, and they're going to be able to do the basic things pretty readily. Well, how'd that look? You know, were, were you just trying to land your starship or did you come screaming in and, you know, at, 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 at high speed with full, full deceleration and bring yourself to a, to a stop just in time for a, for, for a feather, a, a feather touch, touchdown you know well that's a harder role and you know if you pull it off it's going to be impressive and if you don't there may be some parts i yeah. think i think effect is super important like i'm glad that it exists i mean i'm loving the classic traveler game we're playing and i don't want to change a thing about it i wouldn't want it to modify up to another edition because it's, it's like an experiment and it's a fun trip it's uh, its own thing yeah but <clears throat> but i mean you were just mentioning landing you know and, and our, our dearly departed friend john um you know, he was the pilot, and and I think primary owner too of yeah. the ship um, that that we were running, and and you know his first landing is like you say, mongoose calls for a roll, uh, uh, you know it calls for a roll, and and uh, and so I was like, hey, roll it up, you know, let's see what happens, and he rolled like a twelve or whatever. And uh, and then I that just—I make this look it, good. It's the it's it, it it turns into the establishment of character effect does you know because when that's the first thing that happens you know when the first time the pilot makes a roll is just for a simple landing and and then all of a sudden we find out that he's got a flair you know to impress yeah. people. Yeah. Uh oh, uh, we got a badass over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa. whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah, but but aside from that, you know, you, I, I have a player in my Thursday in, in, in my Thursday night game, and uh, my Thursday night game I started running for for creative types. I started running it for Chris Griffin, uh, Joshua Bell, from Traveler Map, and you know, and a couple of other people that uh, 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 James that, that that ran the one game. He runs a ton of con games and so forth. He's sort of a forever GM. He doesn't get to play a lot, and so and 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 one of my old buddies who. He's a he's a hardcore and died in the wool D and D guy and, and you know, he, science fiction I don't know anything about science fiction you know and he's in the game and he's pissing and moaning about how I don't I don't know anything about this you know how to role play you, you know I'm describing the setting you know this is you know you know you know, you know think about any you know Star Wars or Star Trek or Babylon Five or any of your you know your 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 favorite shows you what you've watched all those shows it's that sort of setting you know it's it's a science fiction setting so just so, so just take take your dnd experience and just roll with it you don't have to know how the technology works because it's science fiction none of us know how most of those technologies <laughs> work we're making it up as we go along <laughs> so and, and he's finally sort of settling down and getting into the swing of things and he's you know he's he's one of the big uh the big color characters and, and you know the big color players um, you know that, that that adds a ton of the role playing, even though he's not technically proficient with the game system. You don't really need to be, and you don't have to be to run it. You just you have a, an idea in mind. You got two d six, and you and, and you and you go out and go. It's 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 because because if you boil it down, if you strip strip all the all the extra fluff away, it's a very simple mechanic. So is, is what I find. Somebody yeah. wrote a review on uh, <clears throat> on on Reddit for Traveler Five. Oh. <laughs> which uh, which was a glowing review. I loved it. I bookmarked it, you know, and I go back nice. to it for inspiration every time I'm trying to attack those books again. And um, you know, we've spoken a little bit off off of uh, recording about the, um, the the sort of inherent beautiful futility, I would call it, of even trying. Um, <laughs> they, they just sort of it's doable, you know. Um, but 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 the ulti ultimately the review came down to, um, it's just a dice system, 
Right. It's all yes. if you and if you can if you can do it enough times, and this is true of any edition of Traveler, I, I would argue. Actually, maybe with the exception of Classic, because there are a lot of charts where you got to know if you don't know that with your strength of eleven, you get an additional plus two for your Cutlass. Yeah. You're because, you, might, you might be screwed. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah uh, because, because there's a uh, different chart over here. Exactly, where you're not yeah. looking at the one that tells you you get a minus four from the cloth armor. But anyways, right. um, but anyway, the uh, um, but but it's true of every edition of Traveler. I think since then, at least of the mainline editions, mainline plus mongoose, that if you can inculcate that dice system, you can handle just about any situation. You can begin to understand the logic behind the dice system. Then you can pretty much handle any scenario that's thrown at you, uh, just by understanding how effect works. And I didn't. We didn't actually talk about what effect is, but the effect is just how much more than eight. Let's assume eight. Usually your target number is going to be eight. Sometimes six if it's a basic task. Ten um, is harder. It's Twelve. Eight, yeah. yeah. So um, um, how much over your target did you go? That's going to be your effect, roughly. Uh, and, and then you can add on to, you can add damage to it, or you can just, you know, make it prettier, you know, make it cooler or whatever. Um, that's what, that's effect. But if you can inculcate that, then it doesn't matter how many pages the dice, the, the books are, um, you can run Traveler, you can play Traveler. Yeah, the, the, yeah, because the rest is just fluff. It, it, really, you, the, you, you have your core, and, and, and a lot of games are like that. that the, a, a lot of the, um, the, the, that's one of the things that sort of, I think, defines newer generation games is they're generally built around a, a, sing, a core mechanic that sort that that that, that is easily that, that's approachable and once you can incorporate that into in, in, into how you're approaching the, the genre and if it's appropriate for the genre it makes it very easy for you to to to, to handle any situation you're likely to run into some some of the older early systems like the first edition DD that, that, we, that we, we also talked about earlier um there's just a lot of random stuff. It's a lot of, you know, it's 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 like somebody had a lot of a lot of, you know, a, a committee sat down with a bunch of different edge cases for how to handle things, and they decided, okay, well, that's how we're going to handle these things, and you know, and, and every person had a, had a, had their own page or half page, and you know, <laughs> they all had mm. wildly I mean, different ideas about things. Yeah, we've talked, Ross, in our Swords and Wizardry experience, that like, basically, like. Every table of D and D eventually develops its own version of a D and D. You know, if you're if you're starting with basic, you're going to eventually have to make enough rulings original. over time. If you start with like original D and D, then it, you're going to yeah. end up on that journey towards some form of a D and D because it's going right. to, yeah. You know. I mean, even if you don't buy an a D and D book or or whatever, you're you're going to end up. You know, your players will certainly hold you to task about rulings you've made in the past, and so eventually right. those are going to be turned into. But it's it's funny that um, that that, that that you mentioned that about like uh, modern games are designed around a mechanic first kind of. Um, the the, the and, often and, are. Yeah. Yeah, and it's actually something that deeply annoys me about modern board games because I think it robs them of much of their flavor. Much of the reason that I enjoy board games goes away if if I can if I can too easily discern the mechanic. You know, I, I've run across. Body. What's that? Just, just play Illuminati. <laughs> um, but in a role-playing game, I mean, yeah, if, if it's all coming from the imagination, all you need is a simple resolution system. You don't need this, you know. Like, on a board game, I like simulationist stuff. I like to know that the, the systems I'm working with are in some way reflective of reality, you know, um, uh, whereas it's not, not as necessary in an RPG, I think. You might like kind the Firefly board game. The, the, the Firefly board game is fun. We've gotten kind of off of high guard. It's my fault again. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> no, I, yeah, but That's a, we, we are running out of time, unfortunately. But, I, man, oh. I've, I, I I love talking about this stuff, Jeremy. I really appreciate you uh, coming and chatting about it. Uh, I've learned a lot, and I just I just love love talking about it. So, um, and... Uh, really appreciate you coming on the show and uh sharing your experience and um um yeah the uh the kind of the the craft works that that went into uh, the, the some of the recent uh, material so um do you have anything that's coming up uh, you said uh, i don't know you said you had some stuff coming up oh no no i have a bunch of projects that, ah, okay. that, that, yeah. that, that that I've always got bubbling, but but as it turns out, uh, for you know, for 
for uh, uh, yeah, for, for for a geek, I'm not I'm not a very good author myself. I, I just I, I have a I'm I'm the idea guy. I, ha I have a ton of ideas, yeah. and I've got a ton of 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 quarter finished products. I've got a you know Billy Bob's uh, a, you know a, a Billy Bob's Speed Shop. It's gonna you know it, it's a, a an idea I have. Oh, you know for for those people that want to go tune their starships, a lot of the things that that came out of of of, of, of High Guard. Were, were a lot of the little tweaks and tunes and salvage yards and you know because high guard is great you know for building nice shiny new ships designed yeah. by you know, d designed by 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 star starship architects from the from right. the best schools and trained in the naval academies and all of the imperial regulations but what about the little the little breaker yards out in you know yeah. in frontier space and and the and the bastard stepchilds that they cobble together that would be out so of cool. The bubble. That's yeah yeah. I have a project for that bubbling. I've got a you know um, a a a a build system for for armor and weapons. It, you know they they did they did a build system for weapons in the in 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 the, in, in the, mer the mercenary um, in, in, in in the mercenary Kickstarter recently. Um, so 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 there, there's a book that lets you design weapons. I hope that we can talk again because. You just touched on what I think is one of my favorite things, and it's it's so briefly dealt with in 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 MGT2, but just the stuff that can happen when you buy a used older ship. Oh yeah, yeah. I feel yeah, like they, there's there's they, so they, much there to play with. It's that, that, yeah. that was I like one of the yeah. first questions I had when I was like, okay, I'm going to do a sci-fi game. Right off the bat, I was like, how do I have that scene in Firefly where they're walking around on a used starship lot? Like, how do you do yeah. that? Yeah, like what a hunk of junk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. May not yeah. look like much. Well, yeah, with and, and, and that's 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 the same sort of thought I had. It's like, you know, what do you, you know yeah, so 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 I, w I was working on like dozens of quirks for every system of the ship and lots of of of, of variation because the, st the starship the traveler the, the starship build system, it's very abstracted, it's very generic. And you know, you know, you know, it doesn't use it doesn't use manufacturer names for things. It doesn't it doesn't it doesn't provide that immersion, that verisimilitude, that fluff that lets that lets people connect to it on a visceral level. Because really, yeah. traveler and roping is it's an emotional you know experience, and you want to engage with it. And you know, as a referee, you want your players to engage with it. And I find it's really easy to get players to engage if you can give them cool stuff doesn't have to be super powerful it just has to be not exactly like the one out of the book and it needs a name <laughs> yeah so that's a great point that's a great people point. all that's over true. it you know yeah well you know um yeah awesome Th I, I i agree uh, let's uh maybe we can we can chat again uh that that would be uh, awesome but um uh jeremy thank you so much uh for for joining us on the on the podcast Thank you so much for having me. It's 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 a pleasure. As you can tell, I am uh, I'm not afraid of the sound of my own voice, and I am happy to uh, I, I'm I'm happy to come and talk to you about, uh, about about anything that I know anything about, and anytime you like. Um, uh, you, you know, as I'm I'm happy to do it. Thank you very much for having me. Awesome. Mythic Mountains RPG is a private online play club that focuses on folk RPGs. Folk RPGs are the games that belong to all of us. They're what actually happens at a table between friends. It's their voice that has the authority on what is fun and what works for them. Weekly, we upload our games to allow others to sit in with us. The channel isn't monetized. We don't own the artwork, music, software, or games shown in these actual plays, and you can find links to their authors in the description. Like, subscribe, and share if you wish, or don't. Just like games in person, you're welcome to pull up a chair, sit in, and watch some of our games. No performances, no fancy equipment, just regular people playing folk, pencil and paper role-playing games, and having a good time. We hope these games will prove a source of enjoyment to anyone just wanting to listen in, anyone looking for examples of how actual groups run and play folk RPGs, and most importantly, if you haven't found your group yet, you're welcome here at ours.